given question a composite bar made up of copper and steel is held between two fixed supports the bars are stress free at a temperature of 50 degree celsius what will be the stresses in the two bars when the temperature is 30 degree celsius In this question composite bar made up of copper and steel is held between two fixed supports and we have to find out the stresses developed due to fall in temperature from 50 degree celsius to 30 degree celsius we know that due to decrease in temperature contraction in the bar is taking place so we will first show the contraction that is taking place in copper so this is the length up to this fixed support we will show the contraction due to fall in temperature for this steel material also we will show the contraction due to fall in temperature now the condition is given that this composite bar is held between two fixed supports so this fixed supports applies the force in opposite direction to prevent this contraction so we have to show the force it getting applied by this fixed support so contraction is taking place on the left hand side so direction is in the opposite direction that is towards the right hand side for the steel material and the magnitude is p now in the same way for this copper material contraction is towards the right hand side so we have to show the applied force in the opposite direction and magnitude is also equal that is p so this p is having equal magnitude but opposite in direction and this is the type of force is the tensile force now if we observe the area that is the cross sectional area for this copper bar and steel bar then the diameters are different so we will calculate area of copper that is pi by 4 d square that is diameter square so when we calculate it is 490.87 mm square in the same way for the steel bar area of steel it is 1963.49 mm square now if we observe the relation in between area of copper and area of steel then area of steel is equal to 4 times area of copper so this relation is useful to for the calculation part so i will underline this so we have to develop the relation in between the area cross sectional area of these two bars now we will prepare one table to find out the stresses developed due to fall in temperature so first we have to write here the contraction due to thermal energy so thermal energy that is thermal change that is fall in temperature so what is the amount of contraction how to calculate this so we have formula that is the coefficient of linear expansion alpha multiplied by the change in temperature multiplied by the original length so here we have to write this formula so if we observe we will take for copper it is alpha c that is coefficient of linear expansion for copper multiplied by change in temperature if we observe 50 minus 30 that is 20 degree celsius so i will directly write here 20 multiplied by original length so what is the original length of this copper so it is 0.3 meter so i will directly put the value so we have to write alpha c T L or L C then here L S now for steel so for steel material we will write alpha S multiplied by twenty that is the change in temperature multiplied by the original length of the bar so here is zero point six so standard unit is meter so values are mentioned in meter so we will take as it is now the next row we have to find out change in length. prevented due to mechanical applied force p so this force p prevents this contraction so we have to find out the change in length that is getting prevented by this tensile force p so how to find out so this is the mechanical applied force p 
so we have formula we know that young's modulus e is equal to stress by strain so the stress is sigma and strain is delta l by l and we have to find out the value of delta l so how to write so therefore the delta l is equal to sigma l divided by e we have to write this so we will write for copper it is sigma c so i will write here sigma c multiplied by l so l is length of this copper that is 0.3 divided by ec so value of ec so i will write here ec so value of young's modulus for copper is mentioned in the question now for steel we will write sigma s multiplied by length is 0.6 divided by es so young's modulus for the steel material is also mentioned in the question as the composite bath is held between two fixed support this contraction is getting prevented due to this mechanical applied force p so we have to write the formula contraction due to thermal energy is equal to change in length prevented due to mechanical applied force p so we have to write the total contraction so with reference to this table how to write the total contraction due to thermal energy so we have to add these two values that is 0.3 into 20 that is equal to 6 alpha c plus 12 alpha s is equal to now delta l prevented due to p so we have to write this total change in length prevented that is 0.3 Three sigma c by e c plus zero point six sigma s by e s. Now this is the stress due to mechanical applied force p. So how to write this mechanical applied force p? So if we observe this stress sigma, we can write as a applied force p divided by cross sectional area. Now if we observe for this copper material and for this steel material, this p is having equal magnitude so we will write here as therefore p is equal to sigma c multiplied by cross sectional area of copper is equal to sigma s multiplied by as so this is the formula because this p is equal for both the bars now we know that the relation in between this area of this steel and area of copper so area of steel is equal to 4 times area of copper so how we can write here that we therefore sigma c multiplied by ac is equal to now as is equal to 4 times uh, ac so we will write sigma s multiplied by 4 times ac so this as area of steel is replaced by 4 times area of copper now on both side this ac ac is getting cancelled and we will get sigma c is equal to 4 times sigma s so we have to write here so how we can rewrite this equation so now we will rewrite here as a 6 multiplied by alpha c it is given 24 24 into 10 raised to minus 6 plus so here one bracket is complete now 12 alpha s that is 12 multiplied by alpha s that is 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 is equal to now on right hand side we have to write sigma c is equal to 4 sigma s so i will replace this with 4 sigma s 4 sigma s into 0.3 divided by ec so ec is given that is 100 giga newton per meter square so we have to convert it into newton per meter square so 100 into 10 raised to 9 plus sigma s into 0.6 divided by es is given 200 giga newton that is 200 into 10 raised to 9 now if we observe the denominator here it is not common so if i multiply with 2 by 2 2 divided by 2 then this denominator will become the common term that is 200 into 10 raised to 9 and we will transfer this term to the left hand side and we will solve this equation 
On left hand side, we will take 10 raised to minus 6 as a common term. Therefore, 144 plus 144 into 10 raised to minus 6 multiplied by this 200 into 10 raised to 9 is equal to. Now here, 4 multiplied by 2 that is 8. 8 multiplied by 0 0.3 that is 2.4 sigma s plus 0 0.6 sigma s. So here 6 sigma s we will take as a common term. So we will get 3 sigma s is equal to this term. And therefore sigma s is equal to 19.2 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square. And therefore sigma c. So sigma c is equal to 4 times sigma s. Therefore it is 76.8 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square.